Hey everyone, it's Love Star. Welcome to my first ever art vlog. I'll be showing you guys some of the artistic stuff I've been up to the past week, so I do hope you enjoy. I am going to be giving you a voiceover for most of the clips, since I was waiting for my camera's microphone to arrive during the week. But anyway, let's get started. The first thing I wanted to show in this vlog is actually a personal drawing that I was working on, and this is of my character Marina. I've been so occupied with other projects and commissions lately, but I decided to take some time out of my day to draw something really fun that I would truly enjoy. And my favorite easy drawings to make are cute portraits of my characters. <laughs> I think I enjoy it a lot because I get to choose an expression that fits my character and pay close attention to the facial features. Especially rendering the eyes. That part is always my favorite, especially for portraits, since I can paint all the little sparkly details. I really like doing this drawing of Marina because she has a really pretty color scheme. Purple, teal, pink. Those are some of my favorite colors to draw, if that's not already evident by my portfolio. Although these types of drawings are not particularly challenging for me, I still love to do them here and there, and I really enjoyed this one. The first thing I wanted to do today is make some decorations for my wall. It's looking a little bit plain, and I feel like it needs a little bit of art to liven things up. I decided to cut out some pages from my Cyberpunk 2077 book so I can display them on my wall. I don't usually cut out pages from my books, but I make an exception sometimes for my Cyberpunk book because I love the artwork so much, and I'd rather not waste my expensive printer ink on posters. I mainly wanted to decorate this part of my office with some art because it's actually going to be the backdrop for my facecam videos on my Minecraft channel. So I wanted to make sure that it was a nice background for people to look at and also a good representation of my interests. So you can definitely see a lot of cyberpunk stuff and some fantasy cutesy stuff too. I used sticky tack to put all of these posters up. It's a really easy and non-permanent way to decorate your walls. I also included some images that I printed out from Pinterest and my own art, and some things that I drew myself. I really like the progress I made so far, but I'm definitely planning on adding some other things later on. I just need to find some more material. The last thing I did this evening was something I've been wanting to do for ages, which is to make a cover page for my journal. I made a collage of photos and drawings I found online and then printed it out. I cut out each picture, which is my favorite part. I love cutting paper and stickers and anything of the sort. I also cut out the marina drawing I did. A few of these pictures ended up being too big for the cover, so I will be putting them on my wall later on. But yeah, this whole process of cutting out little pictures based off my interests, then gluing them into my journal or sketchbook or wherever, is so much fun to me. I really love this sort of activity. It's really soothing and fun. I guess you could call it similar to scrapbooking, but I personally call this activity of mine crafting, because I kind of create this whole process of searching for the material, putting them together, cutting them into shapes, gluing them in, rearranging and finding the perfect spot for each little item. It's a whole ritual to me, I guess. But I really love it, and I think the end result is pretty awesome. This process is pretty time consuming, especially creating the actual backing for the cover. I had to use one of my journal pages as a guide and then cut out a piece of black cardstock, which is going to be the background. And then I have to find the perfect arrangement of all of these little things. Of course, I couldn't fit everything together, but I love how it turned out in the end. I 
I start off my Wednesday morning by making myself a cup of coffee, and then I eat it with some homemade banana bread, and it was delicious. After I had my coffee and did my morning journaling, I added some more pictures to my wall. I found some student artwork from an art university's magazines, so I decided to cut out and display my favorite ones that I really admired. I was going to attend this university actually, but I changed my mind. So now their magazine had no purpose to me, so I gave it a new one. I really love how these turned out, they really helped fill up some of the empty space I had left on my wall. Later in the evening, I squeezed in some time to do my art studies. I am trying to do some character concept art today, so I drew a sketch of a species I made so I can document their physical characteristics. I also drew Hanzo from Overwatch, but we're just gonna ignore that. Then I begin the sketch for my character Vega, who I'm in the middle of redesigning. I wasn't really happy with her old design because I didn't think it fit her character very well, so I wanted to make sure that her new design was 1. fun to draw, and 2. more fitting. So I gathered up some inspiration and started to draw. Well, unfortunately, it's my bedtime, so I'll have to finish this all tomorrow. Good night! Good morning and happy Thursday! I'm starting off my day with some morning pages and coffee. If you're not familiar with morning pages, it's a concept from the book The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, and I have grown very fond of the practice over time. I sit down every morning and write three pages of whatever comes to mind, basically stream of consciousness. I find it to be very insightful, a good way to write down and process my thoughts. I honestly highly recommend this practice to anyone, even if you're not an artist. It's just so helpful because there's so many thoughts in our head that just accumulate throughout the day and I feel like this practice just really helps kind of filter everything out before you start your actual day. It helps to keep your mind focused on what's to come throughout the day rather than what's already in the past. I also got a pretty big order today from my Etsy shop, so I'm starting off my work for the day with some sticker packing. I love packing orders for my Etsy shop, it is seriously just so much fun. I also have to cut out a 40 pack of my fairy core stickers, and since I cut my stickers out by hand, for the next hour or so, that's what I'll be doing. It is pretty time consuming, but it's so much fun, and I honestly love cutting stickers. It's super satisfying just the way that the sticker paper feels when you cut through it. I don't know, it's kind of like a little fun activity to do. It's really relaxing as well. I like to put on a fun YouTube video to listen to while I cut them out, so it just really just gives me a nice time to relax and <laughs> just do something quite satisfying. Later in the day, I started working on a sketch page I was doing. I'm currently drawing a redesign for my character Vega. I had an old design for her, but I don't think that one really fit her character that well. So I made a new one that I like a lot better. She's a Sun Saluna Angel, which is my own species that I made up. Details aside, I gave her very light colors to be more in line with her species. I think she will contrast very nicely with her wife, Neo, whose colors are very much dark and vibrant. So visually, they look really different, and I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, I've been kind of sketching her for a while now, and I really want to draw a finished piece of her later on. Definitely something quite epic, perhaps with a dark, spacey background. Story-wise, I haven't developed this character as much as I would have liked, most of my attention with my Saluna Angels have currently gone to Neo, who is kind of a very important character in my story and lore, um, but of course Vega being her wife is also very important. Um, I don't want to ramble about the details of my intricate lore here or anything, but um, yeah, I definitely want to write about her later on and see if I can develop more of her character. 
I do have a bit of information about her basic personality and I think that's what's kind of interesting about her is how she looks like a very strong character based on her appearance and while technically she is a very strong character physically, um, she is a very strong woman, but one thing about her personality is that she's also very much a neurotic, kind of emotional person. She's quite sensitive and isn't as like bold and brave internally as she might appear outwardly. So she kind of has a lot of contrast going on in terms of how she looks and kind of how she acts. She does kind of put on a front, of course, because she needs to be a strong character but on the inside, it's a little bit more of a challenge than she might let on, which I think is pretty interesting, so yeah. She's a character that has a lot of potential, but I still need some time to develop her some more. So yeah, I'm almost done with this sketch page. Um, it was pretty low effort. I didn't want to do anything too crazy, and I think it's kind of, you know, just nice to draw something a little bit more simple and low standards for yourself than usual. Sometimes I like to do just some lazy sketches, and despite how messy and unfinished the sketch is, I, I think it's pretty good still. I like to treat myself in between work with a little bit of homemade chocolate banana bread and coffee. Yum! These days, I never really get that much time to draw anything personal because I'm usually working on commissions or work art or something like that that is kind of obligatory and um, I really enjoy drawing my own characters. So tonight, I decided to draw a little colored sketch of my character, Sasha. Um, she, I haven't drawn her in so long, so I thought I could give her a little bit of attention. And I chose this pretty interesting pose that I saw from this like really cool render I found on Pinterest. You can probably see it in like the left corner over there. So yeah, I kind of wanted to draw that because she has- Sasha has this like huge warden sword. Um, or I guess a great sword. And uh, I wanted to draw her holding it and yeah, it was just kind of a random little drawing. I also experimented with the- I don't know what this kind of brush is called, but basically I got this effect by using the stroke effect on Photoshop layers and it basically creates an outline around your brush strokes. So this is a really cool trick to actually create um, shapes very easily without having to draw in the lines. It's really satisfying and I love how easy it is to create like forms and shapes. Um, it's a lot quicker and I think more effective than doing line art sometimes. Although it can get pretty messy, so you probably have to do a little bit of cleanup um, if you're gonna be using this tool. I of course didn't because this was just a sketch, but I really loved using this tool for the hair. Um, I think it was just so much fun to draw all the little hair strands and it made it look a lot more natural because I was able to do it just a lot quicker. I definitely want to utilize this stroke tool, this stroke outline tool thing more often. I have been a little bit here and there, but definitely not enough, and I think it's a really great time saver, especially because it actually does work pretty well. I was really enjoying this piece, honestly, even though it's really simple and I like hardly even shaded it at the end. It was just fun, you know, the art that I have the most fun with is really just the um, the little personal drawings I make that involve my original characters because I just love them so much and any drawing that I do of them that gives me an opportunity to develop their like character or their world, even just the slightest bit, it just gives me so much joy. I really want to start being more intentional with the personal pieces I draw in the future, specifically relating them more to actual lore and stories. Sometimes I kind of fall into this habit of drawing just my characters kind of just standing there. Um, of course, doing like some sort of cool pose or whatever, but I really, really want to delve more into like actual story art that kind of shows the world they live in, the situations that they go through, their life and their story and kind of their lore basically and tell it through an artwork. I think that's just kind of the coolest type of art to make because it's so meaningful. I have done this of course in the past, I mean a good amount of times. It's not like I never do this but it just requires so much work, so much planning and like so much time that I usually when I draw my OCs lately I just kind of, I just make them look nice and leave it at that. <laughs> So yeah, I definitely do want to start making some more like lore pieces lately. Of course, I don't really have that much time for it as of late, unfortunately, but 
yeah, it's still fun, you know, at least I get to draw them here and there. But yeah, as for the sketch, I, I like how it turned out. It's very messy. Again, I'm I am gonna be doing some some more polished personal art later in this video, and you'll get to see that, and I'm really excited to show you that. But yeah, I, I really like how this turned out, and I especially really like how Sasha's face turned out. I think she has such a like mature and like sh and like brave expression on her face. And I think it's just so cute, and I, I love Sasha. She's just such a cool character. I wish I could, I wish I had the time to tell you guys more about all of my all of my OCs, but this vlog is not for OC info dumping, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to leave that part out. <laughs> Usually the first thing I do when I start my work throughout the day is do my commissions and for the past few weeks I've been getting a lot of commissions um, because I'm doing a little project for someone where I'm basically drawing a portrait of all the major characters in the anime Overlord. I've never seen Overlord myself but I've been drawing so many of these characters by now that I might as well watch it at some point. Although I don't really watch anime like ever nowadays, but yeah, um, I'm very curious now because I've drawn just so many of these characters and some of them do seem pretty cool. Uh, this time I'm drawing this guy, He's, his name is Demiurge. I'm not a big fan of his design, but I am going to have to do it anyway. But yeah, I'm just gonna kind of skip through this part because I'm just like not very excited about this drawing. <laughs> So next, I decided to make a little drawing for a thank you card I wanted to include in my Minecraft videos to thank my YouTube members. I've been getting so much support from my YouTube memberships lately and I'm just so freaking thankful. And it's really nice. It feels like a little community and everyone is just so supportive and so kind and I just love talking with my members and making them extra content. So I wanted to make a little thank you card and a cute little drawing, of course, needs to be included, so I'm drawing my little persona making a heart. It was supposed to be a pretty quick drawing, so I'll be getting this done basically in a day. But drawing the beads of my necklace reminds me that I wanted to make some homemade boba, so let's go take a break and do that. Making boba is a pretty simple process, but it does take a lot of time because you have to roll out every single ball, and that just takes so much time. It's quite tedious, but it's totally worth it because I really don't get to go to boba shops that often, so having a way to make it at home is pretty nice. The only thing is I don't have any black food coloring, so my boba balls are like this light beige color rather than the black that they usually are, but I guess that's just details. They still taste amazing! Well, after I made my boba, I spent the next few hours recording a Minecraft video, but now I can finally continue this drawing. You can see my boba next to me, and I was drinking it with a spoon because some of the boba balls were too big for my straw, so oops. But yeah, now let's continue on this drawing. Well, here's the finished result. Of course, there's a big empty space for everyone's names, but I really love how this turned out. Okay, so the last thing I'm doing tonight is actually doing a little sketch before I start my next drawing, and it's going to be a personal illustration, so I'm super excited because, as you guys know, I don't really have much time to do personal illustrations lately because I'm so busy with work, but this one is going to be really fun, and I'm going to explain the entire thing to you guys because there's a pretty cool little backstory behind this drawing that I'm going to be working on. So yeah, I will explain that in a second because you're going to see the process, and I'm just so excited. So yeah, this sketch actually looks really bad. Just ignore my really lazy <laughs> sketches that is covering this spread of my sketchbook. I really don't like it, but we're just gonna ignore that. Um, I just wanted to show you guys the actual, the first initial sketch so you can compare it to the final result because I'm telling you the final result is like 10 trillion times better than this. So I'll be working on that tomorrow. All 
All right, before we get into the drawing that I was talking about, I wanted to show you how I started my morning. So I was actually sticker cutting. These aren't actual stickers, but I printed out a bunch of these cute little ephemera, I guess they're called, so I can glue them into my sketchbook and mostly journal. I've been using them a lot for my journal pages and they just add so much fun to them. I really love using them. I love cutting out little stickers, crafting supplies for my sketchbooks and journals, like anything like that, and gluing them in is just so much fun. It's an activity that brings me so much joy, so I was like super excited to cut these out this morning. Well, now it's finally time for me to start working on this artwork, and I am so excited to tell you guys about it because trust me, I have a lot to share. I wanted to tell you about the process and the story behind this artwork because I think it's actually quite interesting. So, this piece that I'm working on is an art study of an artist that I have recently come to really admire. I am so glad that I discovered their work because, well, in a way, their artwork influenced me in so many ways, and I never even realized it. You may be wondering how this is even possible. Well, it all starts with a game called Blade and Soul. It's a Korean MMORPG that I still consider to be one of my favorite games, even though I don't play it anymore. Ever since I started playing Blade and Soul back in 2019, I was fascinated with the art and the style of the game. The concept art and in-game renderings were absolutely breathtaking, and I'm especially fond of the unique style the game had during its Unreal Engine 3 days. I'm still not very into Unreal Engine 4 BNS, I think it just took away a lot of the character the game had, but that's a side tangent. Regardless, even though I'm not an active player anymore, I still log on sometimes just to look at the scenery and the world the game has. It's just beautiful. Over the years, I've scrolled through hundreds of Blade & Soul concept art and fan art and other artworks and photos of the game, and I am just absolutely fascinated with how incredible all the official artwork looks for Blade & Soul. It just has such a unique style, and I've always been so drawn to it. So recently, I actually came across the work of the lead artist who made most of the original concept art for Blade & Soul, Kim Hyung Tae. I saw one of his pieces on Pinterest, which was not Blade & Soul art, yet his art style instantly clicked with me. It looked very familiar and gave me that Blade & Soul vibe, which then led me to realize he was actually the artist behind the game I love so much. Yeah, I came across the lead artist of Blade & Soul without even realizing it. So after scrolling through hundreds of his artworks in absolute astonishment, I decided to make a study of one of his pieces, which is actually the first artwork that I came across when I originally discovered him on Pinterest. And I am so glad that I did this study. I feel like there is so much I can learn from Kim Hyung Tae's unique style. He has so many unique stylistic features in his art that I absolutely love. Well, for starters, I love how he combines traditional anime styles and exaggerated proportions and mixes it with the semi-realistic rendering style that has a lot of signature characteristics of its own. I also adore his colors. His color palettes are masterfully chosen. He knows how to perfectly combine warm and cool tones without losing any color harmony. The way Hyung Tae uses his colors is really impressive, actually. He often uses a limited color palette, emphasizing a few key saturated hues while keeping the overall design cohesive, by keeping the rest of the colors more toned down. In this piece that I'm studying, for example, his main saturated color was orange, which is primarily seen in the skin tone and the romper of the character. However, the rest of the piece is much more desaturated, the cool tones especially. He has a great technique in choosing colors. I love how different Hyung Tae's use of shadows are too. His shadows are typically quite strong, and if it's on warm colors, his shadows will be intense and cool. His choice of colors in general is so unique that I've been trying to implement them into my own pieces, just to learn how to harmonize colors better, because I think he pulls it off so well. Another thing I noticed about Hyung Tae's art is his use of detail. Now, some artists draw in super duper intricate detail, while others do the opposite. I see Hyung Tae doing a mixture of both. He often adorns his characters with larger pieces of simpler fabrics and shapes, then sprinkles in some key areas of fine detail. This is quite evident in the piece that I'm studying, since the entire outfit is really simplistic, yet he adds some details within the lettering on the lantern, the white design on the stocking, the closure on the romper, and the tip of the weapon. While the rest of the outfit is really simple, this is such a unique way of creating visual interest because that rarity and detail really draws you in without it feeling overwhelming to look at. Young Tae's costume design is so incredibly unique too, which is honestly one of the main reasons I'm able to identify his art. 
There is honestly so much more than I can say about this piece and all the cool things I think Young Tae does with his art, but I'll be going on for ages at this rate, so let me just mention one more thing that I found quite interesting. I mentioned his use of color contrast, the vibrant warm tones with the saturated cool tones. Well, he goes beyond that too. The warm tone in this piece is the romper. It's rendered to show a lot of detail in the fabrics and the folds. It even has a subtle texture with the faint pinstripe design. Yet the black tones in this character, which are just as prominent as the orange, is almost entirely flat. There's just a subtle hint of a teal gradient, but other than that, the blacks are completely flat, especially the hair. Which is so interesting, because I and many artists typically render the hair to hell and back, yet Kim Kyung Tae left it at the flat color stage. This is really, really cool actually. Because black doesn't absorb as much light as lighter colors do, and therefore it doesn't absorb as many details like the warm skin and romper do. He just did this effect in a super exaggerated and stylized way, leaving out pretty much all of the details. Super cool! I actually started to try this technique out on some of my work after this drawing, and I think it's so much fun and super visually interesting. But yeah, I learned a lot from this study, and I've even been implementing the techniques I learned into my own artworks after this. I definitely want to do more studies of Kim Young Tae's work in the future because there is just so much to learn. Here's the finished result. I am super proud of it. The pose was so much fun to draw. The rendering was really difficult, but I still had fun. I also did a half study after this one where I drew my character Akane in the style of Hyung Tae. I used a pose from his art as a reference and tried to emulate his style based on what I learned from my first study. I was also trying to see how his techniques would look on my own art. The colors we use are very different, and even the character designs we draw. So this was a really fun study to do, and I love how it came out. Anyway, I think I've rambled enough about art for one day. I really tried to make this all concise, but I had just so much to say. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. It took me ages to make, but I had so much fun putting it together. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future, be sure to leave this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you all later. Bye!